Does anyone have a Bible verse they'd like to share with us tonight? Matthew four nineteen, as he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Anyone else? He must stay grace, but I must stay grace. Anybody else? <laughs> I see my hand go up back there. Oh. I. It's all right. We can work on it. All right. Hope y'all can. I don't know if I can do it. Yeah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and faint not. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. You did better than Tim did this morning. I'm pretty sure he got it.
ready uh, when they uh, when they get ready to uh, baptize this young lady. If anybody wants to come up, needs to come up a little closer to get a picture, uh, feel free to do that. We're going to turn the lights down a little bit when they get ready, but uh, won't hurt a thing. Y'all want anybody wants to come up here and get a little closer for a picture.
joy and an honor to be able to step at, into this baptistry. And uh, we, uh, we put in a new air system. I, I'm going to be transparent for a minute. Could it could be? We put in a new air system about a couple weeks ago. Praise the Lord for the volunteers in the church that did that. But uh, in that process, we, we, uh, we didn't hook our hot water heater back up. So uh, we've been in the process today. Uh, it's not as cold as the creek. I mean, it's not bath water either, but uh, uh, it don't matter. Uh, what matters is another name been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah, yes, sir. Being baptized will not get you to heaven. I could baptize you 53 times, and 53 times you'd get wet. But what gets you into heaven is, is that you take in your place as a sinner whether it be on an old-fashioned altar or whether it be at your, at your house. But it takes three things in order to be saved. Admitting, believing, and confessing. You have to be willing to accept the gift of life that has been offered. You don't got to be rich. It don't matter what you drive. It don't matter even what you've got to wear. He came to seek and save that which are lost. You can be black or white or American or Chinese. He came to die for all mankind. My hope and prayer is this. As we're sitting here tonight. Is that you are ready. I want you to be thinking about that just for a second, if you could. See, there's a day a coming that's going to be of separation for so many. It's going to be a bittersweet day. For us that's born again, we're going to be in the presence of our wonderful Savior forevermore. But for those who's not ready, for those who this season is coming to pass... Friend, where will that leave you? You see, right now we serve a, a, a merciful God that is full of grace and full of mercy and full of love. But some of these days, that season is going to pass. And we're going to stand, you're going to stand before a God. And that mercy is not going to be there. You're going to stand before a, jo a God that is a just God and a God of wrath. So, friend, where does that leave you? I'm going to ask Miss Brooke if she'll step on down here. I know that she appreciates each and every one uh, that's that's come to be be here tonight. And uh, if I may just share just a second, and I'll get out of the way. I remember the night she accepted Christ as her Savior. Remember, remember that time. And I remember. There's a lot of times that. As a pastor or as a preacher, you, you may wonder. You may wonder if it was really praying, if it was really sincere. But I heard her prayer. And I don't have no doubt. I can't, I can't look at anybody and tell you if you're lost or saved. But I do know this. If I heard her prayer, God heard her prayer. I told her that I've never dropped before, so. <laughs> Upon your profession of faith, I baptize my sister in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.
I never fit with the popular crowd And I've been told by some around me This world's fun and I missed out Don't spend my time chasing a fortune I'll never walk the halls of fame Don't have a fancy education To put a title small voice tells me he's there. I have joy when they say I shouldn't. And I have peace when it doesn't make sense. I can rest content when I have nothing.
trial or a pain he did not recycle to bring me gain I can't remember one single regret in serving is my anthem this is my song the theme of the stories I've heard for so long God has been faithful he will be again loving compassion it knows no end all I have need of his hand will provide he's always been faithful He's always been faithful. He's always been faithful to me. Miss Brooke, uh, come up and just ask. She said, is it okay if I say something? I said, well, sure. So anyway, I told her I'd stand right here beside of her, and uh, that's what we're going to do. Thank you, everybody, for um, coming. Um, it's crazy to think that um, I'm getting baptized right now because not too long ago, you know, I was... I was close to death. <laughs> I think that's something, yeah. And I was not going to heaven. Oh, bless your Lord. You know, I told myself um, that I didn't believe because if I did believe, then I knew where I was going. Bless your Lord. But now. I know where I'm going. Hey, man. <laughs> hey. I know I'm going to be walking the streets of gold. Hey, man. And just, I'm so thankful that Jesus has died, you know, for me and for you. Sure. For, to die for our sins. It's just... Just amazing. Amen. 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 Yes. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Bless your heart. Praise the Lord. Just want to share with you just for a second. It's hard to uh, hard to follow that. <laughs> I'd like to ask you to stand, if you would, with me. I'm going to be in a couple different places, and uh, all you all giving me a hard time this morning. You 
might ought to try preaching sometimes. It may not be so easy. Amen. <laughs> I shouldn't have said, should I say that, Brother Danny? That's kind of a, amen. That Danny amen me right there. I tell my wife that all the time. Tony, you're trite sometime there, sweetie. Amen. <laughs> all right, that's kind of an inside joke right there. But anyway, Jeremiah chapter number 8 and one verse. I heard many a men of God stand and say that it quite possibly could be the saddest verse in the Bible. Heard it preached many, many ways, many, many times. I'm going to read it to you tonight. Jeremiah 8, verse number 20, it says, The harvest is past. The summer is ended, and we are not saved. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before you this evening, Lord, just thanking you for yet another privilege and opportunity to be in your house. God, I thank you so much for the precious Holy Spirit, Lord God, in which that we feel. Thank you, Lord God, for the baptism this evening, Father. And thank you, Father, that we have more to follow. God, I pray and ask God this evening, Father, that you'd hide me behind your cross for a little while. Lord, guard my tongue, Lord God. Father, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Father, I'm absolutely nothing without you. As Ananias spoke to the Apostle Paul, he told him that he was a chosen vessel, Lord. And I'd like to think, Lord God, tonight, Lord God, as broken as what I have been, and at times as broken as what I am, Lord God, I thank you so much, Lord God, that you chose me way before I ever chose you. Lord, I pray that this evening, Lord, you'll give the increase as your word goes out. In your precious name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. says, the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. I made mention just a second ago and 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 by by way of testifying that the season is about to pass. Of course, we're coming in on a new season. We just celebrated Easter a couple weeks back. We're coming in on the the gardening time. We're coming in on the, the, the new growth season. And then we're going to blink, and we're going to be right in the middle of Bible school in June. And then we're going to blink and we're going to be right in the middle of July, vacationing time for so many. And before long, August is going to roll around. The kids are going to be preparing themselves to go back to school. And then before long after that, we're going to be looking in at another Thanksgiving season. And then we're going to be coming in to the end of the year. And we're going to be celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ once more. That's the plan anyway. Somebody say amen to that. That's, that's, what we, that's what we plan if God tears his coming. The thing about it is I've blinked in 22 years. I made mention of this and I'll get back to the scripture. I've blinked in 22 years has passed that me and my wife have been married. 27 years that we've been together. I still remember the time of the first time that I went to her house. And I blinked and now here we are 27 years later. I remember some of you that's sitting here in this congregation tonight. I remember seeing you in in the hallways of school. It seems like yesterday, Spanky, I'm fixing to tell on you of just how old we might be, amen. But I remember as a kid... Of, of, of Spanky that I looked up to in, in such a great way. He was, he was my football coach and I was in Little League. <laughs> Sorry, Spanky. And he wasn't very easy either. But I'm thankful for that. And now uh, the season has, is about to pass. Uh, now that I've went from uh, being a, a young man to now I'm middle-aged, going on... A, <laughs> One of my buddies at my same age said to me the other day, he said, well, Tim, 
we've got more years behind us than what we do in front of us. And I almost ran out of the road when he said that. It, but that is true. So where am I going with this? I, I'm, I want to tell you tonight that this season is going to pass. We as myself and so many others that said here, you blinked and you've watched 30 years roll by. Jeremiah was the weeping prophet here, prophesying to Israel, prophesying the reason he is a weeping prophet. Nobody wanted to hear what he had to say. He preached and he preached and he's preached. They've thrown him in jail. They, they, they mistreated him in a sense. They did not want to hear. They did not have time to hear what was being said. And at the end of the, of, of the last chapter in Jeremiah, you can read. And then as it goes on into Lamentations, you can see that the season passed for Israel. That season passed for Judah. And then they had no other choice. They become a captive for 70 years. What's parallel with us and what's parallel with them? The difference in us and the difference in them is that they, were, they become captive for 70 years. They, they were in, in under captivity for 70 years. The difference is when, when you allow your season to pass, when you get to the point of that final breath, friend, you're going to be captive forevermore. You're going to be doomed forevermore. The Bible says here, it says, for the summer is past. The time is ended. The, the, the summer is ended. And yet we are not saved. Friend, that you're in the last part of the season. We're not guaranteed a tomorrow. To everything, it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number 3, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. I think about this. I think about what uh, Jesus had to say to Nicodemus when Nicodemus came to him by way of the night. He didn't want nobody to see him coming to Jesus. He didn't, he didn't want anybody. He didn't want to bring any attention to that. But he, he knew who Jesus was and he knew what Jesus was. And his season was fixing to pass. Jesus said it to him. Nicodemus said it, said it to Jesus first. In, in the book of John, in the third chapter there, and in verse number four, it said, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He told him there, he said, except a man be born again, you'll not see the kingdom of heaven. I like what the book of John and the 14th chapter there and about the 6th verse, as, as, as John was speaking right there, or as, as in the book of John, as, as Jesus was speaking and he's talking to Thomas, some of my favorite scripture, Thomas said, you're going away, but how, how are we going to know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no man can cometh unto the Father but by me. You see here, friends, and I, 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 there's no other way to say it than just this. There's coming a time and coming a day that this season's going to pass whether it be 70 years or whether it be 80 years for some or whether it may be 30 for others. Amen. Our life is going to pass. And you know what? It says in the book of James, it asks the question, for what is your life? It is but a vapor that appeareth for a little time 
and then vanisheth away. We blink. Boy, that's an encouraging message so on Sunday night. Go to work on Monday morning, isn't it? Well, it is encouraging for you that's born again and ready to go. It is for you that, that is, if this season were to end today for us, amen, then you know what? It's, it's joy, it's joy, it's glory in the morning, amen. But for you that's not, for you that there's question in your heart, would I truly be ready? Am I truly ready? Today is the day. Today is the time of salvation. Friend, you'll not beg your way in. You'll not buy your way in. At that moment in time, that when you face the Lord Jesus, when you face the Lord without Jesus as your Savior, at that moment it's going to be too late. He's going to say, depart from me. You say, well, I give my tithes. Or I, I, I spent time in the church. Or I was on the church roll. There's going to be many. The book of Matthew. There's going to be many that stand before him. And there are going to be many that stand before him and say, Lord, have we not prophesied? And in your name have we not cast out devils? Done many wonderful works. Oh, we did all that. And he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. For I never knew you. Friend, where does that leave you? Calvary Baptist Church, I'm talking to you tonight as well. Where does that leave you? You've been on a church roll. I, I, that, that, don't, that just don't cut it tonight. I'm grateful and thankful that you are. Amen. But I, I, want, to, I, I want to know... That you know, that you know, that you're born again and that you're ready to go. I'm not asking you to doubt your salvation, but I'm asking you to be secure in your salvation. Amen? Amen? To where that you can stand and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ without doubt, without second guess. Amen? We're coming in on a day and time that it's going to take a church that's full of the Holy Spirit and that'll be the only hope that our children, that our schools, that our drug addicted county has is Jesus. Jesus Christ and it's going to take the people of Jesus Christ stepping up to the plate not asking you to doubt your salvation but I'm asking you to know your salvation either you are or you aren't you either you're either in or you're out you're either there ain't no straddling the fence honey that's a terrible place to be amen you're either saved or you're lost you're either born again or you're not. And the fact of the matter is your season is passing. We're not guaranteed another Sunday. We're not guaranteed another season. We're not guaranteed another fall of the year. We're not guaranteed a, 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 another Bible school, Brother Donnie. We're not guaranteed any of that. Today is the day of salvation. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much again for your word. God, I pray that you give the increase, Father, of it. Lord, if they be somebody in our presence, Lord God, I know without a shadow of a doubt that, Lord, you wouldn't place upon my heart tonight this scripture if someone didn't need it. Lord God, if that church member, Lord God, that is questioning, Father, didn't need it. Oh, Lord, I pray that I can't see into the hearts of your people. I can't see the, the heart condition, God, but, Father, only you can. And, Lord God, I pray that you would send the Holy Spirit by. Lord, that convicting spirit. Father, that you may speak to that one. Lord God, that the season, Lord God, that that vapor is slowly vanishing away. And God, we know that while we're here, we don't get a redo. We don't get a rewind. But Lord God, we can start from this point forward. 
God, that we come and, and into repentance. Lord God, and ask you to save our souls. God, I pray, Lord God, that you give the increase. Lord, I can't save anybody. But I know that through your son, Jesus Christ, the third part of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you can be born again. They can be born again. Just as I was. And Father, for that, I thank you so much. I pray that you'd go with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. In your precious name we do pray. Amen.